Hey everyone, today I'm going to be doing part three of my superconductor series. And in this episode, what I'm going to be doing is doing experiments to answer the questions that you've asked me in the comments section. The two main experimental requests that I've been asked to do with my superconductor is first, put it in the vacuum chamber and see if it stays superconducting or quantum locked forever because there's no air to conduct the heat. And second, put it on a scale while it's levitating and see if the weight increases while it's in the air levitating above it. So I'll be doing these two experiments for you today and then explaining why we get the results that we got. Okay, here we go. Superconductor on, locked. Okay, let's see how long it keeps moving. Okay, so the two things that I'm going to be testing in the vacuum chamber, one is if the superconductor will stay cold forever while it's in the vacuum chamber, and two, when it's in the vacuum chamber, now that we've removed air resistance, will the superconductor be able to rotate or bob up and down forever because there's no air resistance around it? Okay, let's get it rocking. So we barely got to a full vacuum and it dropped off again. Okay, we're at almost a full vacuum, fourth of an atmosphere in there. Okay, we already lost it. Right when it got down to full vacuum, we already lost the superconductivity. Okay, so why didn't the superconductor last forever in the vacuum chamber? Well, that one has a pretty simple answer. It's because liquid nitrogen, while it's under vacuum, it actually evaporates faster. Now the superconductor has a little reservoir in here so that it can contain the liquid nitrogen. The superconducting material is mostly on the bottom here. And so it can keep liquid nitrogen in there, but when you put it under vacuum, it causes the liquid nitrogen to evaporate very quickly. And so you actually lose some of the liquid nitrogen that could have kept it cooler because you put it in the vacuum chamber. So you can't get the superconductor to stay a superconductor even when it's under a vacuum. In fact, it even lasts less time while it's in the vacuum. The other thing we noticed is that when we put it in the vacuum chamber, when it was swinging from the giant neodymium magnet, you can see that it damped a little bit. 
That's because even though the levitation is frictionless, when it hits the edges of the magnet, it actually causes some internal heat in the superconductor. And that causes it to heat up a little bit and it causes some energy loss from the swing. Kind of the same as swinging a pendulum from the end of a rope. Even if you swing a pendulum in the vacuum chamber, which I've showed before, it still loses energy through the string. So in this case, we've replaced the string with magnetic flux lines, but either way, it still loses energy in the vacuum chamber. Even when it is on a frictionless track, the track is frictionless, but when it hits the edges of the track, it actually loses energy. You can see when I put the superconductor on the giant neodymium magnet, it's frictionless in the center, but when it hits the edges, it's like it's kind of hitting a wall. Now the energy when it hits that wall has to go somewhere to stop it. And so it increases the internal energy of the superconductor a little bit, and so it absorbs some of the energy, much the same as if it were hitting actually a solid wall. Now the superconductor by itself weighs 19 grams. Okay, let's see how much everything weighs. So the beaker weighs 97 grams. The magnets on top of it weigh 214 grams. Now let's put the superconductor on and see if it increases weight. Okay, here we go. 234 grams. <laughs> Take it off. 213 grams. Put it on. 236 grams. So you can see that the weight still increases even though it's levitating on top. Now I can actually set stuff on the superconductor. Let me set my lens cap on here. And you'll see that the weight goes up even more as if I'm just setting it on the scale by itself, 248 grams. So it's as if there is actually a material in between there supporting the weight. So there you go, putting a superconductor on a scale does increase the weight as if you're just setting it on the scale normally. Okay, so why did the weight increase when we put the superconductor on the scale? Well, that's because even though it's floating and levitating there, the reason it's floating and levitating is because it has a repulsive force from below it. And so the force is getting translated up into the superconductor. So just like if you have two repelling magnets, if you push on one magnet, it can push the other one away. So imagine this were a scale and this were the superconductor. If the superconductor is going to support itself, it's pushing down. So it has to push down to oppose gravity and that pushing down translates into the scale below. So even though it's levitating there, it's still pushing below it. So it's almost as if the superconductor is just in contact with the scale. There's nothing special going on. Any force that's going on with the superconductor gets translated below. In fact, even when I just set the superconductor by itself when it's not cold on a scale, the superconductor isn't touching anything on the scale. It's actually the repulsive forces of the electrons in the scale and the superconductor pushing against each other. Same thing as with a normal object. When you set something there, it's the electrical repulsive forces of the electrons in both materials pushing against each other. So when it's cold, it's actually just replacing that electric force that normally repels it with a magnetic force. So in both cases, there's this force that acts at a distance repelling and pushing on the scale. So the only frictionless motion that you're going to get with a superconductor is internally inside of it with the electrons moving inside. So a current can go frictionless in there, but the uh, superconductor itself can't move frictionless in the environment. So I hope this answers some of your questions. Thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to subscribe and hit the bell so you can be notified when I release my latest videos. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.